we embark on another journey to find even more really difficult Sega Genesis and Mega Drive games. Here I decided to throw in a few subscriber recommended titles that I honestly didn't remember being very hard at all. And oh my how wrong I was. Let's take a look at part 3 of really difficult Sega Genesis games. My exposure to Shadow of the Beast was really limited back in the day. I played it many many years ago during the life of the Genesis, but it was quickly lost in the shuffle of what I considered better games. I hadn't touched it since, but it was recommended by many of you as a really difficult game, so I had to give it a try. And holy hell were you right! Right from jump you need to realize that Shadow of the Beast is not your typical platformer in the slightest. The developers intended this game to be an adventure where you will die many times to learn how it wants you to play it. The 12 hit points you start out with are attached to only a single life, and then it's game over whether you are 10 seconds in or 10 seconds away from the ending. Items like keys are hidden to block your advancement, and endlessly respawning enemies are everywhere. Any deviation from the proper path usually means unwanted damage and many, many deaths. That means that your memory is the key to this adventure and to ultimate victory. And your ass will be handed to you until you find the proper way forward. Anyone that beat this without using a cheat has my undying respect. <laughs> You know, I remember Sword of Sedan being a rather poor playing game, but I can't say I remembered it being difficult. Again, my memory hid the terror stored away in this steaming pile of shit. I usually appreciate large characters in video games, but these poorly animated, terrible controlling mannequins are at the center of this game's difficulty. You are beset on all sides by tons of enemies and traps right from the get-go, and it never lets up. Poor hit detection guarantees you'll take damage no matter how well you play, but I managed okay until I started getting to the enemies I simply couldn't hit at all, and then set in the frustration as I wildly swung my weapon for dear life to no avail. I was enraged by the time I would get to the two assholes you see on screen at the moment only to have them fail me time and time again. By the time I figured out how to hit them, I still lost tons of life in the process. I was done after that and never want to play this ever again. I can always deal with a well-designed game that is intended to be difficult, but those games out there that are hard because of a complete and utter side effect of incompetence deserve none of my time. There are few games in the library of the Genesis as frustrating as Dark Castle. Slow, unresponsive gameplay is only the start of this nightmare. While you are busy having your ass handed to you by the bats, rocks, and rats of Dark Castle, your ears will be assaulted for further humiliation. In what has to be one of the worst soundtracks on the machine, Dark Castle is like a kick in the balls and then having your face spat in. Insult to injury is the only way to describe it. You begin this adventure by having a choice of which direction you want to go when you start the castle. This leads to areas that you need to be fearful of both the enemies within, but also the myriad of environmental dangers as well. Our hero here isn't a speedy or robust fellow either, with easy deaths coming from falling short distances and the aiming mechanic that takes forever. Getting deeper into each area just becomes more and more frustrating, and the deaths keep coming faster and faster. After about an hour of this gameplay and audio torture, you'll be almost glad to go back and play something like Shadow of the Beast. You'll take an ass whooping there too, but at least you can walk away with your sanity intact.
Lion King is one of those deceptively difficult games. It's hidden under a layer of cuteness, great animation, and a license that just screams play me. The first stage is even set up to lure you into this thinking. You jump around to happy music and do your little cub roar to scare enemies like lizards and beetles. I mean, this is going to be a cakewalk, right? Well then, just as quickly as it lured you in, the deaths start coming fast and furious. First you start getting levels where you have to grab onto stuff to progress, but many times if you miss it's an insta-death and back to the beginning or checkpoint. Then you get to stages where you must ride another animal and memorize the dangers, which again often lead to one-hit deaths. This leads you into areas where you have to worry about enemies much faster and stronger than you, with the ever-present death pits looming large all around you. Then there's the special stages that often pit you in situations where a hit or two will end your run. No easy checkpoints here, and a death sends you all the way back to the beginning. If you grind your way through all of that, welcome to the stages where stuff just randomly drops on your head while you are trying to just navigate your way through the maze-like design. And just when you think you have found a path forward, BAM! Time to do it all over again. Welcome to the Lion King. There's a type of game out there that is designed to give you a hard time. A game that wants to push you as far as you can go yet reward you with a limitless continues to keep you going. Its gameplay is responsive, its visual and audio presentation satisfying. It simply is designed to be a very good, very hard game. Two hits, you're dead. Enemies and obstacles all around you. It never lets up and is always on the verge of killing you. You need to remember everything that happens to you so the next life you can get a little bit further and just when you think you have it done, you figured it all out, you find out you have to do it all over again to see the real ending. Choose your weapons wisely, warrior, for this one will show you no mercy, no quarter, and it will leave most of you whimpering like children, googling its many cheat modes. The first Sonic game is perhaps one of the platforms most recognized. The many looks and sounds of this one goes hand in hand with many Sega fans' fondest recollections of owning a Genesis or Mega Drive. The simple mechanics of jumping on enemies and its fast, colorful, upbeat presentation belie the beast within this one. It seriously does lull you into believing you are just going to speed through every stage wrecking the enemies like nobody's business and then things start to slow down. More enemies become more aggressive, and the environmental dangers increase exponentially. First it's fire and spikes you have to get through, making holding on to your rings a real challenge. Then you get tossed into stages where you are being bounced all over the damn place, eventually making you hope like hell for a place to land and be safe just for a second or two. Then come the water hazards where you have to keep moving to get to the next breath of air. The water impedes not just your speed, but also your jumping accuracy. Mess around here and you're looking at using your first continue. The thing is though is that all the while you need to keep enough rings, 50 at the end of each stage, to make it to the bonus stages to acquire Chaos Emeralds. You need 6 of these to see the real ending. Miss even one and you'll be treated to this screen for all your hard work. Fatal Labyrinth was kind of Diablo before there was a Diablo. 
you start out in a terrorized town beset by ghouls raiding and killing at will. The legendary castle of doom Dragonia has appeared, and the world is on the brink of permanent darkness and despair. Our lone hero must enter the dread castle and navigate its 30 floors, which are full of all manner of vile creatures. Nearly everything is randomized here, even the magic and potions. You pretty much have to use them each time you play to see what they do. Items are randomly generated too, with loot like weapons, armor and food, and even accessories strewn about for you to find. As you get higher in the castle, you'll begin to meet creatures that can cast status effects on you repeatedly, destroy and curse your weapons and armor, and even fall into traps that will send you back to previous floors. The random nature can make one play radically different from another, but no matter what, this one stays challenging and nearly unforgiving at times. You eventually meet enemies so aggressive and powerful, every move must be carefully considered to progress. It's a deceptively deep game that many will pass up because of its meager visual presentation. If you're a fan of roguelike dungeon explorers, please give this one a try. It'll kick your ass, but it's a fairly good time while it happens. There are a few shooters I'm good at on the Genesis, a few shooters I'm okay at on the Genesis, and a few shooters I'm bad at on the Genesis. Whip Rush here falls into the lattermost category. I used to pop this game in back in the day just to play the first level and soak up all those gorgeous layers of parallax scrolling. And then the beatdown would usually ensue. Whip Rush was one of those games that didn't flood the screen with power-ups very often so losing your upgraded weapons after taking damage meant being stuck with a pea shooter for a while. Then came the stages where you had to go backwards, and then the stages where you had to go through tiny passages where the slightest error meant lost power-ups or a death. By the third or fourth stages, I was dead left and right, making this one one I had to walk away from. I was usually pretty dedicated to beating shooters in my younger years, but this one just had my number. I kept it in my collection though, just so I could replay that first stage whenever I wanted. So, 8 more games capable of giving you a hard time. This episode, perhaps more than any other, really defined the difference between a game that was designed well to be hard, and a game that was hard because it was so poorly designed. Stuff like Dark Castle and Sword of Sudan are truly awful games that instantly frustrate you with poor mechanics and awful presentation. They set you up to fail from the get-go. When you start to hate a game that quickly after hitting the power button for the very first time, you pretty much know how it's going to end. I'm SegalordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.